Remember, Robbie, I don't want Dr. Gordon called away from my party Saturday night. No emergency calls. I'm relying on you to keep everybody healthy. I'll do my best. <laughs> I hope you heard that, Alan. I did. How was your fishing trip? Fine. How are you, Margaret? You're my doctor, you tell me. You look lovely. Is that a medical opinion? Personal. It's cold out. Probably snow soon. I was shopping. Tenth anniversary is tin, you know. So I had one of our wedding pictures redone as an old-fashioned tin type. David looks wonderful in a handlebar mustache. Anybody I know? By the way, Alan, why did you ask me to come in today? I've been meaning to since last month, when you and David had your annual checkup. I, uh, I thought I detected something and had to verify it. Sit down, Margaret, please. Well, what do I have? Nothing trivial, I gather. Not you. David. David? Why, well, he's the biggest, strongest, healthiest. Go on. What is it? Let's skip medical terms, Margaret. I didn't go fishing. I went to Boston, New York, Johns Hopkins. Because of David? They confirm my diagnosis. What is it? It's in the bloodstream, Margaret. Nothing can be done. How long? About a year. Oh, Margaret. Margaret, I wish I could do something. Seems like only yesterday that I married David. You can make every moment of this year memorable. Like my party Saturday night? I ought to send out new invitations. Make it a combination anniversary and, and wake. Gentlemen will wear black ties, of course. Margaret. Be sure to propose a toast to David's health, Alan. It's his 10th and last anniversary. Positively till the 11th ever. Margaret, don't talk this way. Why not? <laughs> I hate every woman whose husband isn't going to die. I hate you for telling me. I didn't want this year to be wasted for you and David. Perhaps I shouldn't have told you. Perhaps. Who knows, it might have been kinder. You can devote yourself to making this year a wonderful one. Crowding a lifetime into it. No. I won't be able to do it. I know I won't. I'll, I'll break down and then he'll know. If he knew, it would poison every remaining moment. I'm relying on you, Margaret. You'll handle it. I can't do it. You'll find the strength inside you. We all do when we need it for those we love. Unselfish acts always change us, Margaret. Strengthen us. David? Hello, darling. Hi. I knew you'd wait up for me. Brought you some milk. Thank you, David. How was your dinner with Mr. Barry? Oh, good food, but no deal. Hey, you're reading my mystery. I haven't finished it yet. I haven't even started. I was thinking. What about? Us. Sort of taking an inventory of our marriage. Oh, well established firm, been in business ten years, no dissatisfied customers. Let's declare a dividend. Madam, if there's any available, I want to buy some more stock in this firm. <laughs> you own it all. Oh, yes, I know. I forgot to get a haircut again. That's all right, darling. 
Didn't Mr. Berry like your plans for his estate? I suppose he did, but he prefers 17th century castles with colonial columns. What's the matter? Don't you care for me anymore? Why? Yesterday you said I looked like a shaggy dog. <laughs> I'm going to stop nagging you. I've been treating you like a child. You're a big guy now. Old enough to get your own haircuts. <laughs> oh, maybe this is why I forget haircuts. Whatever it is you want, you've got. Me and Cook, maybe? No, just you. Are you going to make a new set of plans for Mr. Barry? No, I told him I didn't have the experience to build moats and drawbridges. David, why don't you do what you really want to do? Well, how can I do what I want to do if I can't make money at it? Does that matter so much? Well, I gotta make a living, don't I? Why do people always say, make a living, when they only mean making money? You got any ideas how to live without money? I got these out today, David. Look at them. Remember how you felt when you won the prize for designing them? Remember? Then, to make a living, you decided to practice architecture for just a little while. And that little while has lasted ten years. You've been so busy making a living, you never got back to what you wanted most. And that's criminal, David. Dreams are too rare to be wasted that way. It's too late, darling, and it's too risky. So what? Everything's a risk. What was the name of that man? The one who was so interested in your work. The one in Boston. Yeah, he was kind of interested. What was his name? Uh, Jack, uh, Ferguson, that's it. That's right. I never did contact him, did I? Why don't you go to Boston to see him? Oh, now, hold on, Margaret. What if I fail? We'll have to start all over again. You won't fail. Not my David. And you'll be so happy working at your kilns. The kilns kills without pronouncing the end. Why do they call a kiln a kill when it's just a pottery stove? Just to confuse you, darling. David, please go to Boston. Oh, now, Margaret, don't rush me. I can't just leave like this. Why not? Well, I don't know. I have no real reason except well, that I... Darling, a guy I never had a... Sweetheart. Okay, you win. I better pack a bag and get it ready. It's already ready. <laughs> Anniversary, David. It was fun. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, David. Thank you for your Good night. Good night, David. Good night, David. Enjoy your party. Thank you. Good night, Alan, and thank you. That's what I'm supposed to say. This is the first time I've ever seen you, the last one to leave a party. No emergency calls? You're slipping, Alan. Someone else was taking my calls tonight. But I did promise to drop in on the Stanley boy no matter what time I left here. That cute freckle-faced devil. What's wrong with him? Pneumonia. But he's over the hump now. You take good care of that boy. He's the best baseball player in the neighborhood. Good night, Alan. Good night, David. Don't stand out here too long. It's cold. Every time anyone mentions the Stanley boy, I see that look in your eyes. Oh, now, Margaret, this isn't anyone's fault. Lots of people can't have children. But you should have a son to play baseball with, to take to school. We could adopt one. But how do we know what we'd get? How do we know what we'd get if we had one of our own? Now, Margaret, you're rushing oh, me again. please, David. Mm, well, we'll see. Maybe next year. No, no. You really want to. Please, David. Okay, okay. <laughs> you see, we'll require financial statements guaranteeing your ability to care for a child. And, why, thank you. And you have to supply us with medical reports on your health. Medical reports? Why, yes, Mrs. Hughes. Unhealthy parents rarely make good parents. 
Oh, you see, we're very lucky, Mrs. Logan. We're never sick. We'll live to be a hundred. That's nice. for teenagers. I can't handle late hours and dancing anymore. Margaret, I think you're handling it very well. I think you're handling everything very well. Thanks. Harry, you prescribe for us for a change. Alan, what are we going to do about the adoption? He keeps asking me about Mrs. Logan. You've got to keep stalling, Margaret. He can't take a physical. There's something else I have to ask you. I've been afraid to, but I have to know. When it happens, will there be much pain for David? No, Margaret. A few sudden chills now and then. Growing sense of tiredness. Then after a few weeks, a coma. <laughs> Is it all right for him to be working so hard? It's best for him to keep busy. Busy? This is the first time we've been out in weeks. Ever since Ann Terrell came down from New York, they both practically live at the factory. I thought she came from Boston. No. Margaret, have you, have you ever noticed that your husband has two left feet? David? Mm -hmm. He's a perfectly beautiful dancer. <clears throat> With me. <laughs> oh, she kept talking about production. On the dance floor? On the dance floor. Ferguson sent her down here to get the plant rolling. That's all I could hear on the dance floor. Get the plant rolling. Couldn't hear the music. My apologies. Just pretend like it never happened. Anyway, I have to forgive you, David, when I think of those blue moon designs. Have you seen the Margaret? The designs, yes, but not the finished model. They're sensational. Why, they sing. Oh, there I go, picking up those she-she expressions again. And me from Idaho. You certainly deserve a lot of credit for making him give up architecture, Margaret. We've been married ten years. It's the first time I've ever listened to her. Well, from now on, you better listen to her every day of your life. 7428. 7428. I think we finally straightened it out, David. Look, here's a mistake. Oh, Mrs. I... Logan. That's the lady that's going to get us the baby, did I tell you? Only about 50 times. Mr. Hughes, how nice to see you. How are you, Mrs. Logan? Oh, I'm fine, but I was so sorry you decided not to adopt a baby for a while. And I had just the boy for you, too, freckles and all. Well, maybe we'll still have him after you straighten out your business affairs. Hmm? Mind, I can't promise, but, well, I did think he was the perfect choice for you. Oh, my goodness. Well, I wish you wouldn't delay too long, Mr. Hughes. There's nothing like a child in the family. Well, by now. Call me any time. David, be fair. Margaret must have had a very good reason. Let's just pretend like that didn't happen. You needn't feel hurt, David. I liked it. I liked it very much. But it wouldn't be any good. You married, David. We're not like that, either one of us. You've been gone almost three weeks. I missed you. Raining all the time, too. I had a cold a couple of days. I hope you didn't get a chill. Oh, no, just one of my early winter colds. I'm fine now. Did everything go all right? Oh, great. Ferguson was beaming. He said Ann and I made the best team in the pottery business. Ann? Was she there? In Boston? Um, no, I talked to her on the phone every day. I couldn't spare the time to get to New York. 
I'm going to take a hot shower. Won't be long. Come in. For Mr. Hughes, special delivery, airmail. Just put it down. Thank you, Felice. David, package for you. Package? Open it up, will you? Sure. shirt. One of your shirts. Where did it come from? From your hotel. In Boston. Nobody could have foreseen this. It isn't the result of deliberate malice. Remember, it's October now. Don't you think I know that? I've held on for nearly a year. Smile, Margaret, he may be looking. Don't watch him all the time, Margaret, he may suspect. Don't choke on that lump in your throat. Don't cry at night with him lying next to you. Don't think, don't feel. Just wait and wait. I can't let this happen now. What does she expect me to do? Hand him over on one of his own platters? Every moment of him belongs to me, not to her. I'm sure she was caught by her own feelings just as unintentionally as David was. You can't argue with human weakness. I wonder if I told her. If I told both of them. Margaret, you wouldn't. Wouldn't I? Why not? Because you love him. And what does loving someone demand of you? Must it drain you completely? Smash every memory, make everything taste bitter, and leave you in an empty house while he goes to her? If necessary, yes. Love will do even that. Why should it? And why should I be so self-sacrificing, so noble? I'm entitled to as much happiness as she is. I'm David's wife, and I have enough venom and hatred in me to do anything to keep him. Because I love him! I have no excuses. It's nothing that you do or don't do. It just happens. And it happened to Anne and me. It happened to us once, remember? For a long time, I didn't think about anything but the factory. Just working to fulfill a dream. Then suddenly, Anne was that dream. Oh, I don't know. Maybe something happened when I met Mrs. Logan that day. Mrs. Logan? What's she got to do with this? That's when I found out that you'd stopped the adoption proceedings. Why did you tell Mrs. Logan that I wanted to wait for a while? Was it that you never really wanted it? I'm afraid I can't defend myself on that point. You let me think everything was all right. You let me wait and hope. Oh, why did you do it, Margaret? It was so unfair. Unfair? You're hardly in a position to use that word. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way, honey. I know you didn't. I told you everything. 
David. If only you'd be hypocritical. If you denied loving her. If only you weren't so honest with me, I could hate you the way I want to. Margaret, I'm sorry. The only other question seems to be, what are we going to do about it? I suppose you want to be free. Yes. All right, David. You will have your freedom. Margaret. I understand. Will you please go? It's just that Anne and I... How cruel can you be? Will you please go before I really start to be unfair? been all afternoon? Walking. It's a lovely day. Lovely? It's terribly cold out. You must be tired. But I am a little. I didn't realize it was so cold. You know, you described the symptoms perfectly. What are you talking about? It isn't David who's going to die. It's me. I know the truth now. How long have I? I believe you said there would be chills feeling of tiredness and a coma. Margaret, I wish it were me. I've loved you for such a long time. I knew all along. But it was always David for me. Thank you for your love and for your strength. And for giving me my last year. No. No, you were right to tell me. Because I really did make David happy. Not every woman gets a chance to do that for the man she loves. And after all, isn't that what most of us worry about? What will happen to those we love? Alan. Alan, I'm scared. Alan. 
Solo non scrivo. Solo mi dico. Sì, soffri. Sì, soffri. 